Hi, I'm Pastor Goodman. And this is the Lord who God's life. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. So, when Adam ate of the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, of which he had been commanded, thou shalt not eat of it. When Adam fell, his eyes were opened, and he saw that he was naked. And from that point forward, he started needing to see everything else, too. Because, well, if he's so sinful that he can't be trusted, if he is so corrupt, everybody else must be, too. So it stops being about judging from what you hear. It's not about trust or the promises that people are making or the character of the ones making it. We judge everything based on skepticism, on experience. You have to see it to believe it. And it plays itself out in really disgusting ways sometimes, namely with young men. So uh, a high school kid can uh, open the fridge and find some food that has gone bad and he can test it just to make sure and smell it. And it smells so terrible that he is just hacking and coughing and just trying not to throw up everywhere. And as soon as he catches his breath, he says, that's the most disgusting thing I've ever smelled. I almost died just smelling it. You try it. And then his friend who's standing right next to him looks at him and says, yeah, okay. And he smells it too. <laughs> I've seen it happen. Don't tell me otherwise. What is wrong with us? So when it comes to baptism, then we're in a tricky position because, well, we have a hard time regarding it just based on the promises that God would make about it. We can't regard it based on the character of God because we're so sinful that we have decided we need to see it, to believe it. We have to go based on our eyes instead of on our ears. And it goes bad because, well, baptism doesn't look like much. The water is just plain water. It's God's word that does all the work. Sinners still sin afterwards. Even after being baptized, I remembered I was 19 and I don't know that I necessarily felt any different. So we have a problem. And in the large catechism, Luther's just all over it. He writes, but it requires skill to believe this for the treasure is not wanting, but this is wanting that men apprehend it and hold it firmly. See, there's nothing wrong with baptism. Baptism does what God says it does because the God who makes things happen when he speaks says, baptism now saves you. This is who he is and this is what he does. But for us to actually apprehend it, find any comfort in baptism, we've got to stop looking with our eyes and we have to start listening with our ears. We have to hear the gospel, the Christ who conquered death and rose again. He puts his promise behind it because this is not about your eyes. This is about his promise. And so you can't see your resurrection, but your baptism ties you to it because Christ is risen from the dead. You don't always feel holy, but God speaks and says that you are. This all comes from living in your baptism, from hearing that your baptism matters, from practicing that your baptism matters by making the sign of the cross as soon as you go to bed, by making the sign of the cross as soon as you wake up, by rejoicing in God's promises and hearing them um, in, in church every Sunday that he would be there for you. This is not simply then blindly shutting your eyes to the rest of the world. This is just realizing that when God speaks, something bigger is happening. Something with a better perspective than you is speaking to you and speaks well of your baptism. Because here's the thing, at the end of the day, God is smarter than you. That's a perk of being the divine. And so you have got a lot of problems with where you can see simply because you were at one point at one point in time and you have sinful shrouded eyes. And so you can't see what tomorrow holds and you can't see into the hearts of those around you and you can't see how heaven regards you, but God can. And more, he wants you to know it. So even though you can't see all these things, you can hear it. Hear what God would say to you. You are baptized. That says an awful lot. It says that you are holy. It says that you are worthy of love. It says that the God who gave his life upon a cross and rose again has tied you to his death and his resurrection, that you would live, that you would even now be an heir to salvation and the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting, that you right now are worth more than the sum of what you can see. You are worth the promises that God speaks and delivers to you in your baptism. When we practice this thing, then we can start to see just how much God has given us here, not by what our eyes can see, but always what our ears can hear.